And now for something completely different. We're gonna vlog today. So we're going to Arches National Park. We're gonna go to Delicate Arch at sunset. Yeah, so it's three mile round trip, uphill. So we're loading up the water bottles right now. Although it's not really hot here right now. In fact, we're bringing jackets because it's kind of chilly outside, so. We're facing the opposite problem of most people when they hike at Arches. <laughs> I think I'll bring a coffee. Yeah. This coffee's going into a thermos and it's going to taste so good when we make it back to the truck after dark. We are staying in Moab. We're in downtown basically great little campground here that is centrally located and uh, if you stay in Moab you're really only about I don't know five miles or so from the park entrance so it's a good place to be but, you know if you're gonna go hiking you need to fuel up first with a nutritious meal you know what I'm talking about. Gravy. Wow. <laughs> See, marriage is wonderful, guys. He gets half of all my food. That's right. You get half of your wife's ice cream. How am I not skinnier? <laughs> giving away half my food. <laughs> Check out what's coming down the street. <clears throat> cool airstream. Yeah, very cool. So Moab seems like a fun little town. Of course, there's all sorts of stuff to do around here. Uh, there are a couple of national parks nearby. There are also some state parks. There are a couple of rivers you can float down. There's some pretty good little restaurants. And uh, there is a pub, which we may visit later if I can talk my wife into it oh yeah you gotta talk me into it so Moab can serve as a great little launching pad to visit all the stuff around here you can just come back to Moab at night hang out have a good time so when you're entering Arches National Park you go up this little windy road and uh, it's really an interesting little drive. Not only is it very pretty, but I think when you climb the mountain, so to speak, and you enter the park, uh, you immediately feel like you're into this alien landscape. You know, you, you see some sites that uh, they seem simultaneously either prehistoric or alien in some way. All right, before we hike out to Delicate Arch, we're going to check out something called Park Avenue. So this is sort of a little undercard before the main event. It says it reminded early visitors of a big city street with buildings on both sides. It's really hard to capture, even on video, what you feel when you look at this type of scene. Again, it really feels like an alien landscape or something. Pretty cool. It's really beautiful. Christy says that these stacks of rocks are some sort of trail marker. It may not look like it, but it's actually a little bit chilly here. We're here in late October, uh, so the temperature is right around 60 degrees, a little bit of a cross breeze. It's actually a perfect time to be here, I think. 
because it can get really hot here in the summer. Tying into the whole uh, alien landscape theme, if they ever do a crossover movie between Star Trek and the Flintstones, it must be shot in this park. <laughs> That's Arches in a nutshell. I'll tell you guys, uh, about one year ago, I fell and broke my foot. Broke my left foot. And spent quite a bit of time earlier this year trying to recover from my broken foot. And certainly the promise of this sort of experience was a great motivating factor. I was really looking forward to specifically doing some hiking here in Southern Utah because all these years of traveling with our Airstream, we had never stopped here. And uh, it's really, in many ways, exceeded my expectations. Again, it's sort of hard to do places like this justice with pictures or video. But when you're down in here, it's dead silent. The landscape is unlike anything you'll see just about anywhere else in the world. And it's just a very special experience. So you gotta come here. That's all there is to it. You know, it's, it's really not hard to envision this as a riverbed that was once full of raging water. <laughs> it looks like just layers of, you know, something stacked on top of each other. It's almost like somebody was making a dish or a cake or something and they just stacked layers and layers and layers on top of each other. It's just so cool how you can see it so distinctly, uh -huh. you know. Some of this rock that we're walking on is just really interesting. It's It's got like these patterns in it. You can just sort of see these swirls. So this is just the undercard hike, but this old geezer is running out of gas. I did have a broken foot. Cut me a little slack. All right, the undercard hike is over. Now we're on to Delicate Arch which is probably the most famous stone arch in the world. Kids, when you're hiking Delicate Arch, go to the restroom, whether you need to or not. <laughs> no trees to hide behind out there. That's right. <laughs> well, if you were doing this in the summertime and it's like 120 degrees outside, you know, there's no shade on this trail at all. It's all the slick rock. So you're just out there baking in the sun. So yeah, if you didn't bring enough water, I could see where people could easily, you know, Die. have a heat stroke. Yep, you could. Maybe. You could. Got to get there before sundown or this vlog will be one huge bust. <laughs> Bridges. I love walking across bridges for some reason. Going up. Okay, so now I feel like a pilgrim on some sort of pilgrimage. Climbing the mountain. Climb every mountain. Ford every stream. Okay, I'm not sure what altitude we're at, but it must be pretty high. Either that, or I am terribly out of shape. No, couldn't be that I'm terribly out of shape. My little step tracker device has been going nuts. I got my goal. They told me there would be an escalator up here. There's no escalator. Now, in case you're lost or hallucinating, trail is that away somewhere. Oh, there's a little trail marker. See it? Unfortunately, the trail marker is leading me straight up the incline. Meanwhile, my wife 
is gonna give me a hard time about this tonight. By the way, my wife instructed me to keep on hiking, even if she might fall behind just a bit. That is because we are on a deadline here. Yep, that's right folks, the old fat guy with a broken foot is still getting it done. We they told us it was a 1.5 mile trail, which doesn't sound too bad. However, we didn't know it was one and a half miles like straight up into the sky. Just as the sun is dipping below the horizon, I see signs of life. There are people gathered up ahead, which means either I have found the delicate arch or someone's had a heart attack. Okay, I didn't expect this. I'm obviously gone to the wrong side of the canyon. <laughs> Okay, I'm definitely doing things my own way here. But, look at the view you got. Pretty amazing, huh? All right, I just gotta get over there somehow. And guess what, I'm not going straight across that. I think that would end badly. So, I thought I would take this opportunity to show you what happens. If you take a wrong turn, a delicate arch, you end up on this thing when you want to be down there. It's as if nature left these little steps for wayward hikers who took wrong turns. No cause for alarm, only a, a three or four story drop. You ever get that feeling that you're late to the party? <laughs> it's a bogus All right, guys. So here's what all the fuss is about. And I really hope I see my wife soon. So there's my wife. She made it. Sorry. All right, so here's the view. Just after sunset in the bowl, a delicate arch, an icon of the West. So we did make it to Delicate Arch a little bit later than <laughs> planned. <laughs> we got up here right as the sun was setting. Yeah. You know, there was still daylight. Uh, but, you know, astrophotography is popular up here amongst the photo diehards. So maybe we'll salvage some photographs out of this thing after all. Yeah. If nothing else, we got a really good workout. Gear packed away. The arch is dark. I have to say, I'm married. Married well. My wife has tolerated me out here, shooting the arch and the stars. Crazy, crazy. This is maybe a little bit more adventure than we had uh, bargained for. Nighttime hiking alongside some sort of cliff. cause for alarm. Watch your step here, folks. Straight ahead, it doesn't seem too bad. Then you look off to your right, and there's quite a drop off still. This is like Blair Witch Project. Not the check I needed right now. <laughs> We've been walking for days. I have a flashlight full of baked beans. In case we get lost. What? It worked well for Bobby and Cindy Brady uh -huh. in the Grand Canyon. The bridge. Oh. We made it to the bridge. Now, if you ask me 
What did I learn? It's very dark coming back down the mountain. So you need to make sure you have good lights. We had one good headlamp and we had one piss poor headlamp. I would not recommend doing it in the dark. <laughs> so daylight hiking, yes. Sunset hiking, yes. Just leave before you lose all your light. It was definitely a little scary in some places. So my mom is gonna kill us for this. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. The things we do for a long, long honeymoon, we do it for you. <laughs> okay, guys, now the question is, is my coffee still hot? It's been sitting in that container for at least nine hours. Well, <laughs> it's not exactly hot, but uh, it's not cold either. Sort of lukewarm coffee. Lukewarm coffee is better than no coffee at all. So, I told you this was something completely different. You know, at the end of every day, if we've had an experience that I know is going to stick in my mind for the long term, that's positive, I would say it's a good day. Because so many days in life kind of blend together. But today was definitely uh, one that will stand out. Yep, it was definitely a memorable, memorable day. All right. <laughs> We're about to go to bed. Nighty night. Good night. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. We're back. Another satisfying adventure. <laughs> now somebody's got to edit this video. Ah!